and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two of my toy sheep series. And in this video, we're going to work on the sheep and we're also going to paint the trunk and work on the background a little bit. If you want to follow along with traditional materials, check out part one in this series for a list of all the paint and the brushes and the canvas that I use. We're using Infinite Painter for Android and we're going to be using the Leo brush to do the trunk that the sheep is sitting on. And if you're following along traditionally, you can probably use your number six flat brush. That will work fine to do the trunk. And we want kind of a, a brown mixture here. And for acrylic, you probably could mix burnt umber and just put white acrylic gesso in it. We just want kind of a light brown color here for now. And we're just kind of making the underpainting, which is just the first layer of this. And we'll go back and we'll highlight it. And here I'm adding a little bit lighter to the top of the trunk just to to show where the light would be hitting it and so you just throw in more white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylics or even if you're following along with oils and then make a little bit of a darker brown color at the bottom of the trunk and here's the important part where you probably need to stick to your original drawing and get it right in the first place because you want the perspective of the trunk to look right and what I'm kind of using for the trunk perspective is a trick that Mark Kistler does. And what he does is just kind of makes all the lines parallel. So that's what I'm trying to do for the trunk is to just get all the lines on opposite sides parallel to each other. And right now it's not exactly right, but I will go back and fix that later. And like I said in my earlier, earlier video, just get it right the first time and save yourself a lot of headache. <laughs> but anyway, I went ahead and started working on the sheep here. And I'm underpainting him with sort of a light brown color too. And burnt umber again with white acrylic gesso would be good if you're following along with your acrylics. And I'm using the Leo brush or the Angelo brush and Infinite Painter. And I just kind of want uh, some first layer colors here. And I'm doing this on a different layer than my sketch in Infinite Painter. And you want to do this so that you can use your sketch as reference and you don't cover it up. And then here I'm just working on his slippers a little. You can use Thalo Yellow Green for that and Hooker's Green. I'm just kind of underpainting right now. I'm not doing any final details here. Just kind of want to get the, the first layer of paint on here and I'm trying to Get the background color there because I missed a spot when I originally colored the background. And if you do this traditionally, just try to match it as best you can and sort of smudge it with your finger to soften it so that you don't have any hard lines. And here I'm just adding a little bit of a lighter mixture onto the sheep's face and on his ears. And you can just add white acrylic gesso to your brown mixture if you're following along with your acrylics. You can use your number three round brush for sort of the details on the sheep. And here I'm using the Leo brush. And then I switch to the Pollock brush for his belly because I want the wool-like texture on his body part. And so I'm kind of... Uh, trying to get that rough, fuzzy looking texture there on his stomach and kind of on his legs. And I'll go back and, and work on that more and, and refine it later on. But I just kind of wanted a suggestion of that now. And then here I'm working a little bit on his nightcap, making it a little bit lighter colored and trying to blend it in a little bit better. And you can use ultramarine blue with a touch of phthalo yellow green and add uh, white acrylic gesso if you're following along with your acrylics and that will give you your aqua color and then i'm just going to go ahead here and use the pollock brush 
to add a little bit more wool texture to his belly here and on his uh, front legs and a little bit that's peeping out right under his uh, nightcap and a little bit on the side of his face. What I want is kind of a soft light shining on him like he's in a kid's bedroom and there's maybe a little night light shining but it's not a it's not a big glaring harsh light. We just kind of want a, a really soft nighttime look to this painting. And so that's kind of what I'm working for is not great big light highlights, but just kind of a, a, a soft lamp that would be in a kid's bedroom. And so then I'm going to go ahead and start on the stars and I'm using a mixture of cadmium yellow light with white acrylic gesso. You don't want them completely white. You want kind of a, a really light yellow here. And again, make sure this is on a separate layer so that you can have your original sketch. And then here I'm using the same color mixture and I'm trying to get the stars exactly right and as I mentioned in the previous video for some reason I can't draw stars anymore I don't know why I think it's just that I haven't practiced them in a long time as a kid stars and rainbows and things like that are really important to you but after a while you try to draw more important subjects not important but you know more complex subjects and you seem to lose the simple things so you would probably it would be good advice to just practice little simple things every now and then like stars and moon and rainbows and things like that because evidently you can lose it i see so i need to practice my stars a little bit more but anyway that's why they're on a separate layer here because i keep having to to fix them and go back and try to get the edges just right and as you can see this is one of the struggles of painting is trying to get things right sometimes it just doesn't come out automatically or that easy occasionally you have to really go over things and redo them and if you're following along traditionally dip a paper towel in water and wipe it off quickly and redo it and that will work but you have to get it quickly now if you're that's for acrylic if you're doing oils oils stay wet a long time so you can paint over or you can take a turpentine rag and sort of wipe it off but <clears throat> you can do it it's just not quite as easy as it is digitally and then so here i'm still working on the stars Still trying to get them right, I decided I should probably decrease the size of my brush and I'm using the Leo or the Angelo brush for this. And I'm just working a little bit more on the edges of them and I finally decided that if I don't get the stars perfect, that's okay because you kind of want it to, to look like a homemade um, child's theater anyway. At least that's my story. And I'm sticking to it anytime anybody asks me. <laughs> but here I'm working on again on the stars. And as you can see, I'm trying to correct it. So it would be better if you just drew it correctly the first time. And then you don't have to correct it. And it saves you a big headache. So either find a star stencil or just work till you get it correctly the first time. And... That's also why you want these on a separate layer so that you can erase and go back and try to get them the correct shape. And so that's what I'm doing is just working on the stars. And I really thought this was going to be a very simple painting and I would be done with it very fast and it wouldn't take very long because the background looks so simple to me and it's not. So sometimes the things that you think are going to be the most easy turn out to be the most complicated and to take the longest. And that's what sort of happened here. But I finally got the stars to where they looked <clears throat> passable. And like I said, they look like a, sort of a, a homemade theater, like a child has done it. And that's kind of, after all, what you want because it's supposed to be a, a kid's room anyway. And this is a mural that he's up against and 
it's painted on the wall or or it's some kind of wallpaper or whatever but that's kind of the idea is that I just wanted it to be a a mural on the wall behind him and so here I'm working on the stars again and the straight edge tool helps a lot actually you can use the straight edge tool and that kind of helps you to get a little bit of a a better edge on the stars and you can use a ruler if you're following along traditionally or you might just find some star stencils that would be the simplest or just start practicing drawing your stars and get them where they're not a problem for you to draw and that's what I need to start doing again so the straight edge helps a lot though but I just kept going back and fooling with this one trying to get it right trying not to get it too big because it's right there next to the sheep and he's supposed to be in front of it and that's just supposed to be a, a mural painting so I just erased that whole thing and I thought I'll just draw the star like I used to do it when I was a kid and that didn't work so then I decided okay that's not gonna work so let me draw it the way I actually used to do another way that I drew it as a kid. And so that's the way I left it this time. And that actually helped a little bit <clears throat> to, to get it a little bit better. And then I used the straight edge tool to straighten out the edges on it a little bit. Just make it a little bit smoother and just forget it finally that it's not going to be perfect. But... You know, if it resembles a star, then we're going to call it good. <laughs> so this is the end of part two of my toy sheep series. And in part three, I'm going to finish doing the background and work a little bit on the sheep. So if you're interested in seeing part three, then hit the subscribe button. And thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below, and I will catch you later.